Virgil Ortiz is just too strong for Terrence Bud Crawford. So says Robert Garcia, trainer of Virgil Ortiz. Virgil also called out Bud Crawford. We're going to have that conversation. What up, Fight World? It's your boy, Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Virgil Ortiz broke his dry spell. He has been out of the ring for a while, and he came back against Frederick Lawson. Not the way that I think he wanted to come back because that particular fight with Frederick Lawson is totally marred with controversy. Check out my last video, but I'll give you guys the cliff notes in this video. This is why you guys must thumb up the video, leave me a comment, and share the video, subscribe, all that good stuff. We are gonna keep blowing the channel up 2024. So Tony Weeks, long story short, referee Tony Weeks, he was the ref for the main event, Virgil Ortiz comeback fight. And in that particular fight, there was a stoppage that was questionable. Most people hated it, said it was a premature stoppage. Tony Weeks, the referee, received a lot of flack for his choice to stop the fight. Then he comes out of nowhere with the Hail Mary. And he explains the reason why he stopped the fight is because he says, basically, little did y'all know the opponent that Virgil Ortiz fought he failed basically two brain scans, some kind of MRIs or CAT scans, and it showed activity, like irregular activity, and it showed that he had an aneurysm. So they're not going to let you fight with irregular brain activity because that's not good for your health. Then they brought in, Tony Weeks said they brought in another doctor, and that doctor cleared him. So now this huge controversy, Golden Boy has responded and they didn't really say much. They put out this press release and said, Frederick Lawson was cleared to fight by INSEC. The sanctioned doctor, all other questions should be referred to INSEC. So you're calling out Terrence Crawford and you're calling out Tim Zhu. Off of that last performance, that's your first fight in a new weight class. And the stoppage was marred with controversy. I don't know. That's not really where you want to be. However, Robert Garcia is confident in his fighter. He believes that Virgil Ortiz has what it takes to beat and defeat Terrence Crawford. Now, listen, I'm going to be very real. If they were to fight, I would favor Crawford. Crawford showed me, and as a man, I could respect that. I picked against him one time. Not twice, not three times. One time. And he made me eat my mud up in words. So it, it, unless it's the, the perfect matchup or like Crawford is super far removed from his natural weight class, like a weight that he can't make or something, it's going to be hard to pick against Bud. That kid is special, right? Virgil Ortiz, I know people, are, they're going to be like, oh, but Ego... Virgil Ortiz has a 100% knockout ratio. I don't care about a 100% knockout ratio. I don't care about records. Now, it's not that I don't care about knockouts for real or that I don't care about records, but we know stop with the games because, like, let's say here's a perfect example. Gilberto Zorro Ramirez. He was with top rank. Then later, he's with Golden Boy. He had a crazy record with a ton of fights, but he hadn't really fought no one. The one time he fought somebody that your boy Ego rates, Dmitry Bivol of Russia, he got cooked. He got cooked. So don't tell me about, like, people, they just want to focus on belts. They just want to focus on records and KO percentage. Listen, some people, like even Arter Better Biv, Better Beav has a 100% KO ratio, but he's fought some real dogs and lot. Like Marcus Brown can fight. I've watched Marcus Brown fight on many. I've covered many of his fights. He's an Olympian and he's big for that weight class, right? Guys like Anthony Yar, he could fight. He gave Kovalev some real issue. So I'm more impressed with guys that Bevo and guys that Better Beav have beaten, specifically Better Beav since he has a 100% knockout ratio. Virgil Ortiz got like a past it, Mauricio Herrera, Mike McKinnison. Now he has this controversy. Same thing with Terrence Crawford. Now, a lot of people, including myself, they did challenge portions of Crawford's resume, 
Like, hey, who is this guy? Who is this guy? But it doesn't matter because you see this graphic. When it all mattered, when everything counted, he beat the guy that he needed to beat, which was Errol Spence Jr. Hey, stop that cat. Man down. The other thing is, y'all not going to catch Terrence Crawford slipping. The man is always in shape. He's always ready. Like, he's just an insanely competitive dude. Like, there's video. There's like probably a thousand videos that is just lurking and floating around this internet of Crawford with friends and like family and other fighters and stuff horsing around, shadow boxing, wrestling, wrapping them up, jumping over them, like just showing who he is as a fighter, just showing that he's insanely competitive and this, that, and the third. So it's, it's going to be hard for me to pick against Crawford unless it's the right scenario. And for me, I'd have to see more from Virgil Ortiz. Now, I'm not finished with this video. I got much more to say. But now a word from the channel sponsor. The future is now. The Hibernation 5s by Kenichi Bear. Hybrid gaming and lifestyle headphones. Out of the box, you can connect to any console or PC. Bluetooth ready with a low latency USB adapter, color RGB, and extreme bass mode. The Hibernation 5s adjust to you. Whether you need a gaming, travel, gym or lifestyle headphones, the Hibernations got you covered. The new Hibernation 5s, link in the description. Customize the way you hear the world. Welcome to the nation. Yeah, being Crawford, man, you're going to have to be special and you got to put it all together. Now, for my personal taste, you know, call me old school, whatever you want to say. But for my personal taste, I feel like if the first word out of your trainer's mouth is Virgil Ortiz is too strong. So we're talking about strength. We're talking about basically power. And if that's your focal point, when talking about beating a guy like Crawford, I feel like you've already done yourself a disservice because we, we've seen it time and time again where guys who didn't have power or a guy, and I'm not saying Crawford don't have power for the record, but I'm just saying in other examples, there's been guys who didn't really have power and then they beat the power guy. I mean, Pernell Whitaker, like he wasn't considered the bigger puncher, but we all know he beat Julio Cesar Chavez, who is considered a puncher at those weight classes, right? So I don't like when people, when their conversation starts and ends with so-and-so's power. I mean, more recently in the heavyweight division, we've seen it with Deontay the Bronze Bomber Wilder. He got all the power in the world, but Joseph Parker had a, an immaculate game plan and what do you do with that power when you can't successfully connect those shots? That's when things change. And one thing I've noticed about Terrence Crawford is he always finds a way to win. Terrence Crawford is very versatile. He's ambidextrous. Like, I don't, I can't even think of a Southpaw that's half as good as Crawford that Virgil Ortiz fought. Like, seriously, if you guys can, please let me know in the comment section, name a southpaw so don't tell me like mean machine because he's orthodox i'm talking about an actual southpaw that you watch as a pro fight and virgil ortiz fought them and they were in their prime i mean the kid can't even make weight in many of his fights so he's getting sick trying to make weight i understand like 54 may suit suit him a bit better but he's been inactive i mean crawford's not inactive I mean, I know Crawford only fought one time, but Virgil Ortiz fought no times last year. So I can't pick him, period. You know, Robert Garcia, he's entitled to his opinion. Of course, he's going to back his guy, but it ain't me. I, I can't pick him. Virgil Ortiz, there's, there's other guys that he could beat for sure. But as far as beating Crawford, and then the only thing you talk about is his strength. Now, some people question, oh, Crawford's chin and things like that. But they said that with Errol Spence. Errol Spence got power. Crawford took what Errol Spence had, managed to stay away from, you know, probably more lethal shots. And we really don't know how good Virgil Ortiz is in this new weight class because 
his fight kind of ended on weird terms, as I mentioned earlier in this video. So I, I think it's just too premature. Crawford, we're talking about him. We're talking about a different animal. We're talking about pound for pound. Right now, Crawford is my number one pound for pound, for pound fighter. As I mentioned, the one time in his whole career I picked against him, my brother told me not to. My brother was like, nah, he's going to beat Errol Spence. And I, I was like, nah, I'm rocking with Errol. I really think Errol has his number. And, you know, Crawford... He proved me wrong. So that's not going to happen again unless I, I feel really compelled to pick against him. You know, it's going to take the right fighter. And for me, if you, <laughs> you're talking about Crawford can't take his power and stuff like that, nah, it got to be more. Because like I said, how are you going to deliver that power? How are you going to get that power off? How are you going to corner him? How are you going to deal with his power? You know, there's just way more intangibles than just, oh my fighter got power you know how, how does your fighter take a punch how does your fighter fight off the back foot Crawford got all that it is what it is hey subscribe to the channel check out some of these other videos I got going 2024 is gonna be a doozy and I'm out <laughs>